Hello again to another one of our nerd rants, ramblings, civilized discussions. Let's stick to rant just because it uh, draws more attention to it, probably. <laughs> and we maybe we start ranting sooner or later. Maybe. Nobody knows. Yeah, nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Nerds decide to start ranting. Everyone is surprised by what happens next. Exactly. Uh, we should get more clickbaity. <laughs> Um, no, we uh, came together here again to discuss a topic that you actually proposed, which is? Which is the intimidating nature of math in papers, or of math in general, or of the language that is used in papers, or of the feeling that you get when you are reading paper that the authors actually don't want you to understand what they have written down. I mean, there are different types of papers. There are surely those one that have been written to just mark your spot on the scientific landscape. And yeah. maybe there are some patents pending, so you don't want to give away too much. Yeah, Definitely there's this type of uh, paper. But then also there are the rather relatable papers, which at some times just diverge or just get derailed into jargon, which I think is sometimes necessary to just make sure that a method, an algorithm, I'm tearing down the whole table here, mm -hmm. um, works not only for the use case that you will use it with most of the time, which is, for example, geometric algorithms in two-dimensional or three-dimensional spaces or domains, but also in higher domains, which might be useful, for example, in machine well, learning. From an academic standpoint, I totally get that. Yeah. Uh, the big problem, or what I what I actually wanted to discuss with you, is the problems that you have if you're just a normal guy, yeah. who is more on the designy side of things and needs math and papers to be able to implement stuff, without the need to just uh, expand on theory or on on science mm -hmm. by writing the next paper. So. Um, What, what I see a lot is, or one of my main feelings when reading these papers is that my biggest enemy is mathematical rigor. <laughs> Because what I want is that somebody just explains their ideas to me such that I can intuitively yeah. understand what they were thinking. Like, as soon as I understand the intuition behind an idea, mm -hmm. it's easy for me to mm -hmm. even work through the math. But then um, most of the time I'm confronted with large formulas that are overcomplicated mm -hmm. because they are formulated rig rigorously. And I get that and I get the drive behind it. And I certainly there are papers and articles which do a good job at verbally or intuitively or through the help of pseudocode give you a chance of understanding what's actually happening. The more I occupying myself with reading papers and trying to get into algorithms, the more I sometimes can understand why authors choose not to do this. On one hand, it blows your papers. On the other hand, I'm not sure if it's a paper's job to give you an intuition about the math involved because some of the math actually is in your standard academics program as the math professors or math teaching as assistants job to give you a good intuition and a good didactics about the math involved. Yeah. So I'm torn on this. No, you are absolutely right. It's just that I want to tell everybody out there, if you have problems with this, oh, um, it's totally no normal. wonder. Yeah, yeah, it's totally normal. No wonder, yeah, yeah, because absolutely. the prerequisites are Massive. enormous. Yeah. <laughs> and that means you have to really, um, yeah, try to really decipher what you are reading there. Yeah. I just want to name it, the mathematical rigor, as important as it might be, yeah. as important as it is for science gets in the way of easily understanding these papers because the formulas are in a very broad way written down, covering everything, being watertight, and that means it's hard to understand them. And some of the formulas are just algebraic hacks sometimes, yeah. Yeah. which you yeah, which abuse certain properties of linear algebra to accomplish a certain thing, yeah, which might not be true. obvious just from the formula. So what to do if you are lacking... Uh, academic mathematical education tell me of 10 years <laughs> tell me <laughs> what yeah how to read one of these papers i think so the first thing is don't get intimidated the second thing is 
understand that mathematics not only is a way of calculating things or, I don't know, a science, but it is a, a language and a, a form of writing, like, I don't know, like musical notes. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn to read this. Yeah. So it's, it's exactly like musical notes, actually. I cannot read them. Uh, so when I'm presented with a, with a sheet of musical notes, it's all gibberish to me. Yeah. And uh, that means um, being able to read a mathematical formula needs training. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have good resources uh, <laughs> for you <laughs> where to learn this other than just academia. I don't know. I mean, what helped me, as I always mention, was Khan Academy going through everything from the beginning. And this took a lot of time. Uh, but at least it gave me um, a lot of, uh, yeah, just knowledge about, just about the, the symbols used and about the way mathematical formulas are written. Yeah. So at least I can encounter some symbol, the summation symbol now, or I don't know, something, or a, a Nabla operator or something. Yeah. And um, that is that is crucial. You have to understand or you have to be able to figure out that this is a Nabla operator. As soon as you know that, then you can start researching on the internet and trying to understand what this actually means and what it stands for. And then you might be able to decipher the formula. But what I actually wanted to say is before you start doing that, try to understand from reading the text what the intuitive idea mm -hmm. behind the whole thing is so what is the problem and how did they approach it yeah. how did they solve it yeah. and most of the most of the time it's actually possible from reading the text over and over again 10 times yeah. 20 times yeah. 30 times to understand what the solution looks like geometrically or yeah. intuitively yeah. and as soon as you understood that then it's a lot easier to, to get the math I think I already mentioned this somewhere else and I keep mentioning those, but I think in my opinion, the two most well-suited papers, actually one is an article, another one is a paper, to get into the habit, into the flow of implementing a paper, is I would start out with Andrew Glasner's um, Soap Triplets, which mm -hmm. is an article, which mm -hmm. is very well written, very well explained, visually as well as verbally, and it even has a pseudocode, so you can with very little math background, get something to run. And we also did a tutorial on that. And on the second one, I think we also did a tutorial, which is uh, the snow crystal formation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I is also a paper which is beautifully written because it is extremely well illustrated. It is extremely uh, well presented verbally. And I'm not sure if it contains pseudocode, but it's not necessary that actually. One, right? Creating, yeah, exactly. Creating a procedural snowflake. Just let me cut to it. That is this one here, exactly. And uh, yeah, that is a beautiful paper. Um, and you can actually, I mean, the math which is in there is not that intuitive at first, especially if you're new in math. But um, you can get to a point where um, all of this makes sense because it's it's a very visual approach in the paper. Mm -hmm. That is uh, actually. Good. Okay. I have one more thing to add, and that is that most papers, of course, use calculus, differential equations mm. are very present in the field. Yeah. And calculus means looking at the continuous world, which is, of course, not true because, as we all know, um, by modern quantum physics, the world surrounding us probably is not continuous. Nevertheless, it prove to be very helpful to think about the world as being continuous. And that is what calculus is all about. Mm -hmm. But the world not definitely is not continuous in computer sciences and computer graphics. Exactly. In computer sciences, the world is discrete. Yeah. That means try to read these formulas in a discrete way. Don't bother with calculus too much if calculus is presenting you a, an integral for example yeah. you can just think about the integral as a sum of area yeah a sum of small parts a sum of small parts in a discrete fashion 
I, I remember when I first tried to implement um, a function to calculate the length of a Bezier curve. Mm -hmm. It drove me nuts because <laughs> I, I didn't read a paper. I, I tried to come uh, to a solution by myself. Yeah. And of course, it's impossible without calculus. Yeah. And then um, I asked uh, um, a friend of mine, who is a developer, mm -hmm. uh, who implemented this already. Mm -hmm. How did you do it? Mm -hmm. How the did you do yeah. it? And he just told me, well, I approximated the Bezier curve with, uh, with um, linear line segments yeah. and then just calculated the length of these line segments and added them up. <laughs> and as soon as you do that, of course, everything just gets very, very easy. Same for gradients or, um, I don't know, curl of a vector field. As soon as you Look. use finite differences instead of Finding edges, with La, yeah, finding edges with Laplacian in the, moon, exactly. in the image. It takes away a, a good bit of the magic. Absolutely. So um, that would be my main suggestion. Think of everything in an algorithmic, computer implementable yeah. and discrete way. So yeah. one piece at a time, adding all up. No, it's not important to find the exact solution. We are only and over, overly approximating everything. And a good approximation, as you probably know, is good enough because in our field, if it looks right, it is right. I mean, especially in our field. I mean, we don't do any um, computational fluid dynamics, at least not in the way that they have to keep an airplane um, or a boat floating. Exactly. Um, or a bridge stable. Um, we just do those calculations to make something look beautiful. Yeah. So the worst thing that most of the time happens or could happen is the client is unhappy. Is the client is unhappy <laughs> or people are just uh, downvoting your post, which is not nice, but um, better than it's, people dying. It is survivable. That's the exactly. point. Yeah. So, yeah, let's yeah focus on the discrete side of things. Um, but that is not that easy with all this math because no. the math usually is written in a continuous form and rigorous and um, cutting the rigor out cutting the continuous way out helps, at least me. And then you end up with an algorithm where you just add up pieces, and that usually helps. But let me add one more thing. Um, I feel your pain. <laughs> yeah, of course, but it's, it's, it's an adventure. I feel the best learning experience is through frustration in a way yeah that's because, true. because you know you gain something when you're really frustrated because you're hitting your boundaries and you're trying to expand your boundaries mm -hmm. and sometimes it just takes forever i mean i have this one topic which might end up in a tutorial soon which you and i have been looking at for i think over maybe two years three yeah, years even longer and i think now i start getting an intuition and a grasp of what it actually is and what it does and what it means but it took me just all this time and just simmering in my head i mean also, I must admit, I've been lazy. I've been not working on it continuously. Just it popped up here and there again. And I was trying to understand it. And I was like, nah, still not there. Mm. And now I'm just getting there. But it's just, it takes time. It is a frustrating procedure. Just as learning Houdini. Just as learning anything that you're not comfortable with. Yeah. And always remember that people that easily read these formulas do all the math in their head, have no problem at all with reading these papers, usually have a very hard time choosing a nice color. <laughs> Are we talking coder colors here? Probably. So the uh, RGB red and green typically. Yes. Um, one question that pops up in conjunction with um, how do you guys go about reading paper? How can I learn to read papers? is um, do you guys have any resources, anything that might be of help when understanding math, when understanding computer science? Um, what are you what are you pulling up there? Let I me, just, just um, let me because switch we, to we, that. We were talking about coder colors and I recently discussed the Commodore 64, C64 palette. And that was it. Can you explain this if you are a coder? I mean, what? I mean, the yellow there kind of looks neat-ish. But it's a weird palette for a coder. Yeah, if you if you have to choose 16 colors, why would you choose those? Yeah. Probably I because, I don't know. I don't know. Just just on a side <laughs> note. On a side note. <laughs> um, so do we have any resources that we um, can highly recommend or that we always recommend? Yes, and that is better explained 
let me just again switch over there better explained come there the ebook that you can buy but there are a lot of very helpful articles for free on the natural logarithm on Euler's formula you name it and it's very well explained okay math well explained and then of course uh khan academy is just great y use it do it i don't know support it because it's just nice especially the videos on um, computational geometry and vector fields and stuff are just great and then uh of course one of the best resources i can think of is uh three brown two blue. Uh, three blue one brown three blue one brown um yeah and this channel is just gold yeah because yeah, he really, really has gorgeous. a way of of giving you the intuition and making the stuff appear easy such that it clicks in your head and you understand stuff so and he has so uh very well executed um explanation animations so beautiful absolutely beautiful by the way he is the one um uh, who created all the computational geometry stuff over at Khan academy ah yeah okay so that's so, his uh, own channel now yes I guess. so that is the three things that i can really recommend to get more math background I didn't know better explained yet. I haven't uh, had a look at this. Um, I sure will do that. Let me add the usual suspect that I throw in for when it comes to computer science, which is Daniel Schiffman with his coding train, which I think is processing only and P5JS recently. So it's not exactly VEX, but it's a C style language. So it might be um, helpful in learning VEX or learning to think about um, coding learning just the basics. It's basically your computer science 101, yeah. such as um, control structures, variables, lists, the whole Very shebangs. Um, yeah. Yes. So there is help out there, but you have to put in the hours. Yep. You have to put in the hours. And I mean, apart from that, there are a few books, which um, although not exactly the math books that will teach you the math, uh, will keep you motivated. One is by Stephen Strogatz. Um, just oh the 3d math primer as well that's a good one of you oh and by the way one thing i have to add i just recently encountered that the 3d math primer the excellent basic standard book for everything linear algebra that's needed for 3d graphics can now be read for free online exactly i think it's yeah games from scratch right it's the second here yes so you get it for free it used to be 30 bucks or something and now you can read it for free i think here now free online that's fantastic cool. resource and then um you mentioned strogatz right? yeah strogatz s-t-r-o-g-a-t-z yeah, exactly steven i think infinite powers infinite powers that's the book i think it uh, was there as a suggestion so let me just cut there yeah that helped me a lot yeah infinite powers is just motivational because it um, sheds light on an aspect of mathematics that's um, not so often talked about um, in school, which is the history um, and the characters behind it. Um, it's talking about calculus. Exactly. How calculus developed and um, the historical happen happenings or events that led to the, to the um, development of calculus. And I really tell you, I read the book twice, um, that by just following the path of history, you really get a lot more concepts about calculus than by just looking at the concepts directly. And also the motivational thing about this, um, I think it demystifies the idea of the mathematical genius that, that just sits there and suddenly goes, Eureka, huh? Yeah, that's true. That's very true. And by the way, if you don't want to read um, the book because you don't have time, there is an excellent audiobook that you can listen to uh, very well narrated um try that one and apart from that the only other hint i would add is that sometimes books actually on paper i don't know why maybe i'm old school maybe it's just the way i grew up um help me a lot when it comes to doing the grunt work of learning that stuff 
And uh, my advice there is to go for the engineering math books or for the computer science math Because books. most of the time they are looking at the discrete side exactly. of things. Exactly, they are looking right? at the discrete side of things and they are looking at things in three or two dimensions. That is very <laughs> helpful most of the time. Yeah, that's very true. And one thing I have to add is, of course, there is a possibility to just go to the university and um, study studies in math. <laughs> I mean, it depends in which country where you are. Uh, we are in the very lucky situation that university education is available to most people that have the uh, prerequisites. So it's not massively dependent on your financial situation. Yeah, that's, that's very true. So it might not be a- approachable for everyone. But in general, um, getting some sort oh. of math education is a good idea. And if you don't want to go to university, you even can at least... Um, at least uh, at MIT, actually watch their recorded lectures for free on open courseware. That is right. And some universities such as Stanford, um, I think they also um, have uh, recorded courses. And they put it all up on EDX. Yeah. EDX is a, a platform where MIT, Harvard, Berkeley all participate and put up courses for free. That is something to probably check out yep absolutely and i think with that we wrap it up yeah did we rant not really unfortunately not so um thanks a lot for watching us for staying with us for staying with us while we talk about math and And unfortunately this video probably has to have math in the title no We'll, we'll see what clickbaity title we can come up with. <laughs> Because as soon as you put math in the title, you will shy away everybody. Yeah. Okay, with that said, I say cheers. Um, yes, and uh, you just leave us in the comments um, what your approach to math or to reading papers is or what your problems are. Um, and yeah, until next time, as always, cheers and goodbye. <laughs>